More power. Mm -hmm. Electrochemical cells. Plug into batteries. Yes, batteries, a.k.a. electrochemical cells. Lecture number six in our redox unit. Okay. Six. Anyways, we're going to focus on how a battery can work. And this is kind of like the, the crown jewel of this unit. This is, it, it kind of culminates all the little things we learned into one culminating piece. Oxidation numbers, half reactions, reactivity cell Ele series. Uh, spontaneous, non -spontaneous. non spontaneous. So a battery is a spontaneous chemical reaction that occurs to create electricity. And we also call them lots of things. We call them batteries. Yep. We call them voltaic piles. Yes. Okay. All these things are spontaneous reactions that can turn stored up chemical energy into electrical energy. And this is the classic picture of what a battery looks like on the regions. Okay. There's two cups, two beakers, this U-shaped salt bridge, these electrodes, and then some kind of wire with a voltaic cell or a voltmeter, or yep. sometimes it's a light bulb even written yep. in the picture. Yep. But either way, you have two separate reactions connected by a couple different pieces of That's equipment. telling you right off the bat that it's voltaic. You see that voltmeter that helps sometimes. The salt bridge mandatory. Definitely. Two different cups. So all those things we laid out for you mm -hmm. are key indicators to let you know it is a voltaic cell right. you're dealing with. Or sometimes I've even seen it was one cup but with like a barrier in between dividing it into two different halves. There is because there has to be two different electrolytes and two, two different electrodes. electrodes to make this whole thing work. But this lecture is mostly about all the different parts of a working electrolytic cell, uh, electro voltaic cell, sorry, right. not electrolytic, right. a working voltaic cell and the chemical reactions that we're going to have to interpret. Out sure. Of now the, to conversely, the electrolytic cell is the non-spontaneous reaction that needs the electricity to make it go. We will highlight that cell mm -hmm. next video in detail. It's like when you switch your battery into recharge mode. So in this picture, we do see electrodes. Those are important. Mm -hmm. That is the metal that connects the, the solution to the actual cell. The oxidation number of the metal is always zero. And if you look, mm -hmm. you'll see a magnesium electrode solid. Yep. And in the equation, it's magnesium solid. That, sh you know, that should have a zero. Yeah, for sure. Should have a little zero. Yep. And same with the copper. Right. So you got pure elemental metals with oxidation state zero as your electrodes dipped into solutions that contain their ions that contain their ions so that some transfer of electrons can happen between common once were atoms. Mm -hmm. they could. So an anode is the electrode that's positive and it's always where oxidation takes place. Right. Remember, angry ox. Angry ox. and ox. Anode oxidation. And we know oxidation is losing electrons. So right. we lose electrons into the wire at the anode, the positive electrode. Good. The cathode is the negative, which will draw them over, right? Mm -hmm. And then where reduction takes place, red cat. Reduction. Reduction at the cathode. And reduction is gaining electrons. So the electrons that travel into the wire on the to one the side, side travel through the circuit mm -hmm. to the other electrode where they then team up with the ions. And right. The neat part about that is they actually right. travel right through the electrode and team up with the ions right in the solution. Exactly. Which is neat. Mm -hmm. So the directional electron flow is really easy because if you know your alphabet, A always comes before C, and anode comes, the electrons travel from the anode through the wire to the cathode. That's how you remember, right there, A before C, goes, always goes A to C. There's another way to look at it, it's the more active metal is always the anode. Active anode will lose electrons to the not so active cathode. Correct, mm -hmm. another good way to look at it. Salt bridge, now this is key, this completes the circuit, Ion, allowing ions to flow. So that's what you really need to be able to say right off the bat. When you hear salt bridge, what is the purpose of the salt bridge? Very common qu question. Allow ions to flow. It completes that circuit. So as yep. the electrons come around, if there's nothing going back the other way, it just it stops and it won't work. It's a dead so circuit. You, right. You need a, So this is like a physics, the physics piece to circuits that we don't do because we haven't taken physics, but it needs to be complete or right. it won't work. It's got to be safe. If you got a wire cut somewhere in your circuit, the battery is not going to power your device. So you have to have a closed loop for the electrons and, sure and we ions all to travel through. we experienced that either in the wire to our remote control because we wind it up or in the wire to our headphones. Headphones, one's dead. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear anything out of this yep. one side. Well, that wire came loose. The circuit is open. And there is no fix in those things. There's no fix in those. I mean, you could yeah. fix it if you're really good. All right, so we're going to take this electrolytic cell 
and do what we've done in the other practice pages. Okay, yep. so I'm going to take that equation on the bottom. We're yep. going to impose that right up top because yep. this is what we are dealing with with our reduction and oxidation. oxidation. So we're going to track which species lose and gain electrons to decide how many moles of electrons are involved. Right, so let's just think about this reactions. real quick. If I go from Mg0 to Mg plus 2, am I gaining electrons or losing? Oxidation is losing electrons and you become more I did. positive. Okay. So I would say magnesium is becoming magnesium positive two and some electrons. Okay. Yeah. I like to think about it this way. Magnesium plus two must have more protons. So hence I must have lost electrons. So oxidation is losing. Are we picking up the pen on this one? We are picking up the pen. Okay. I'll get, I'll get that it? one. Yep. Okay. So we know magnesium is the piece getting oxidized. So we're going to make sure we keep everything on the right side of the arrows, right? Mg zero is on the left hand side up top. Mg plus two is on the right hand side up top. So we need to make sure that piece is set. And then how many total electrons? Two. Two moles of electrons. Two, which is good. Yes. Okay, so next, if Mg0 is oxidation, then I think it's pretty safe to say Cu plus two then is reduction. Yep. And if so, I go from two more protons and electrons to having even number, I must have actually gained electrons. That's the way I like to think about it. Plus two is more protons. Protons are king. Remember that, guys? You yep. used to say that 100,000 times. Protons are king. Two, two electrons are gained. They're on the reactant side, and there you have it. And so when you combine these two oxidation and reduction half reactions, you get the reaction that we started with, which is written for us underneath the electrochemical cell. True. And the reason why the electrons aren't there is because they're the same on the product and the reactant side, so they technically cancel out. It's the same exact two moles of electrons that the magnesium loses that the copper soaks up. So you don't really have to show them in the balanced equation because they kind of drop out of the equation. Right, but when I see them in the half reaction, it helps me understand which one's oxidation and which one's reduction. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's fabulous. We got half reactions. And we just broke down our electrochemical cell thoroughly mm -hmm. all the pieces right yeah and there it is so what you your little piece of inquiry is as follows what would changing the more active metal do to the number of volts and current that a cell produces can you get a more powerful battery by changing the anode Ooh, that would be fun to be a different metal other than magnesium and yeah. what would it happen yeah. if you change that magnesium to, I don't know, aluminum or any other metal or zinc that's or more active than copper on your activity series? Yeah. What would it do to the amount of electricity that the battery produces? Right. Good. And the other thing I'm thinking when I see this particular picture is what parts of this picture let me know it's an electrochemical cell and not an electrolytic cell? Which is going to be our last lecture on the last right. type of so the, remember just a quick recap the important pieces here is there is a voltmeter yep. or a resistor of some sort and a resistor that's a physics term but that's a light bulb or anything we're calculator a battery a, machine, anything, a device that runs on electricity yeah anything that's a, not a battery basically mm -hmm. and then there's a salt bridge yep. key only in voltaic cells you're going to see a salt bridge and then you have your two separate reactions, your two separate electrolytes. And the, and the key questions that they always throw at us, and we'll do this in practice, is when the switch is closed, which direction will the electrons flow? Right. They're going to flow from the anode to the cathode right. through the wire. So, yeah, so you, need you to don't want to just be like left to right, right to left. You should always say from the anode to the cathode. Right. Or from magnesium to, to copper. copper. And you know that because magnesium is more reactive than copper using table J from last video. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Yeah. Go ahead. That's all, folks. Bye. Thanks for watching. Where's my clicker? I can't find my clicker. There it is. Stop it.